So, you've been asked to make a movie as part of your current project, and although you will all be using a very different software and choosing different topics, I'll try to help as much as I can. I think that, in general, your movie will fall into one of three categories. A presentation, which you film. Yes, I'm sure you all know, you should never share personal information such as your name or address online. Don't respond to emails, texts or messages from strangers. Don't post or share photos online. And never agree to meet up with someone you met online. Or a kind of animated slideshow, which you can make using images, text, animations and captions. And finally, I think some of you will choose to create a cinema or TV type drama. We can't let them bully you. But first of all, we need to talk about preparing, because that's the most important part. Don't start filming until you have a plan. Basically, a script. When you know what you want to say, and in what order, you can start thinking about how you will film this, or what images you will use. A storyboard is a really good idea, particularly if you are going to make a drama type of movie. It looks like a comic strip, as you can see, and it shows you the action that will occur, as well as the kind of shots you are going to take. You don't have to do the drawings in any real detail, and in fact you could use photos taken from the internet to make your storyboard. Light is your best friend, and you need to be as close to a window as possible. But never film somebody directly in front of a window, because they will start to look dark. Microphones on cameras and iPads are pretty powerful things as well. You will want to make sure that everything is as quiet as possible. Please. Be quiet. It's not a great idea to hold the camera in your hand unless you are filming very short scenes, because it's almost certain to shake. You can easily hold the camera steady on a surface using books or boxes. And you can even make a little tripod out of a paper cup for your phone. Just cut a V-shape in the cup, weigh it down using coins or stones, and hey presto, it's ready. It's a really good idea to lock the focus on your camera. On an iPhone or iPad, you do this by tapping on the screen, holding down your finger, and waiting until you see the yellow square and the lock sign. If you don't have the focus locked, the image will often blur in and out with quick movements. OK, let's think about the editing itself. If you are filming yourself presenting, it's not going to be easy to edit your video, because essentially it's just one long shot. But what you could do is cut it in places where you mention a product or something that you can show, and then put a picture, a photo, between the clips. Look at my example. Fishing is a growing problem, but there are things you can do, such as using specialist software. The Kapersky antivirus software is highly recommended by PC Magazine. And of course, you should never click on a link. Or... And what about those video presentations, which you can make in programs like Spark or iMovie? Well, there are some really good templates you can use, but there are also many, many special effects which are tempting to try out. 
try not to use too many transitions and filters and stickers because they tend to get a little bit distracting. I'm going to show you something pretty confusing, images and texts that are too fast to look at or read. How much time do you need? Three seconds is usually enough to read a short caption or look at a simple image. Be careful too that you don't put text on a background that makes it hard to read. I forget about this sometimes. Perhaps most importantly of all, you need to know that you're allowed to use the images in your presentation. Have a look at what I'm doing on the screen here. In fact, you shouldn't take or copy most of what you find online, but Google gives you a way to find content you can use without problems. Ask one of the other kids who are doing this topic. And what about those mini dramas? Well, they need careful planning, and as I said before, a storyboard is super important. It will help you decide what shots to use and how they add to the story. Here are some examples. Zoom in on an actor if you want the viewer to start focusing on him or her. Zoom out or use a longer shot if you want to give more of a sense of the place that the person is in. Use a close-up of their face to show their emotion. And cut to important objects that tell part of the story. You need to change the camera angle, you need to change the kind of shot. Use a visual language to tell your story. And by the way, Yada and Kuno are really good at this, so if you need any ideas, just ask them. As I said at the start, I don't know what software or applications you will be using to create your movie. I used several different programs to make this film. But all video editing applications work in more or less the same way allowing you to make movie clips longer or shorter and to change their position in the timeline to help you tell your story. Timeline. That word is very important because videos always take place over time and getting your timing right is not necessarily very easy. Show your project to friends or family to make sure they understand exactly what you're trying to say. And if you need to make changes to help people understand, do that. As always, I really look forward to seeing your work.